Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm the Managing Consulting Director of Griffin Training and Consulting. And we are so excited to bring you the series, Five Minutes of Tech with Griffin. So stay with us because we've got some exciting things coming up this week. This week on Five Minutes of Tech with Griffin, we'll be discussing what makes your computer go super fast. Welcome back. On today's five minutes of tech with Griffin, we're talking about how fast or what makes your computer go fast. But before we get started, I would like to give some shout outs to Christian, Jonathan, Noah, Hayden, Killian, and Rose. And I know we gave a shout out to Tristan last week, but this week is his birthday. So happy birthday, Tristan. Now, what makes your computer go fast? Well, there are two things that make your computer go fast. RAM and processor. However, what you really want to know is what are these things. Well, let's start with RAM. RAM is referred to as random access memory. And a good measurement for RAM in your computer would be between 8 and 32 gigs. And that's right, it's measured in bytes, gigabytes. Although you will find some older computers that still have megabytes, which is very bad. A little bit later in the video, we're going to show you exactly how to find out how much RAM and processor you have on your computer. So stay with us. All right, so what's RAM? Well, every program and system on your computer has commands. And let's just pretend you were going to McDonald's. If you wanted a number six at McDonald's, you would not expect them to make first a number one, then a number two, then a number three, then a number four, then a number five, before they made your number six. You would expect them to just know how to make a number six. All right, well, the same concept goes for our programs. We don't want them to have to go through a list of 600 commands before they get to 601 when you tell it to copy. We want it to just simply do what we ask it to do when we ask it to do it. So all of our systems and all of our programs load their commands into your RAM so that you can randomly access any of those commands at any given point in time while you're running those systems or programs. That's what RAM is. And because our programs are getting bigger and more sophisticated and you as a consumer are expecting them to do more today, the list of commands grows ever larger, which is why it's important that you continue to make sure that you have an appropriate amount of RAM on your computer. And like I said, today that's between 8 and 32 gigabytes, depending on what it is that you do. You will often see RAM on stickers for computers that you purchase uh, mentioned as memory. So if you go to buy a computer and on the sticker it says memory and then it says 16 GB, that is what we're talking about. We're talking about random access memory. All right, so now, what is your processor? Well, your processor is what processes those commands. Therefore, your processor is measured in hertz because it's a frequency thing. So it has to take the command from you, it has to go get the command, and then it has to execute it. So that's a frequency thing, back and forth. It's measured in hertz. Processors have cores. So <laughs> there are still computers out there with single core processors, although we don't recommend them at Griffin Training and Consulting. Dual core processors are also rapidly becoming a thing of the past. So a processor is measured in hertz. Usually it's measured in gigahertz or still some older computers will be measured in megahertz. A processor's cores means that it can double or triple or quadruple or even six times or eight times as many processes do six times or eight times as many processes all at once. Whoo, that's a, that's a mouthful. All right, so just like 
up with your car, the more cylinders, the better. And there is no such thing as efficiency or fuel efficiency when it comes to a computer. You just want that thing to be as big, bad, and beefy as humanly possible. So if you were shopping for a car and you didn't care about your environment, you would have as many cylinders as possible. When it comes to processors, four cores is what we recommend to start with. Six to eight cores is obviously better. And the more hertz, the better. So processors, you don't always see what um, they are on a sticker when you're buying a computer. So when you're buying a computer, you need to look for anything that says GHZ. And that tells you how many gigahertz your processor is running at. It's really important if you can find someone to ask when you're purchasing a computer that you do ask them how many cores the computer you're looking at has. Because if you had a four core processor running at two gigahertz per core, that's two times four, which is eight gigahertz total. Whereas if you had a six core processor running at two gigahertz per core, that would be 12 gigahertz. So you would obviously want more cores. In conclusion, your RAM and processor work together because your RAM stores commands and allows them to be randomly accessed and your processor is what goes back and forth between you and the commands themselves to make those things happen. So even if you have a lot of RAM, it doesn't mean that your computer is going to be fast. You need an excellent processor. However, if you have an excellent processor and you don't have very much RAM, then guess what? You can't store as many commands and your processor can't process them as quickly. So it's important that you have both good RAM between 8 and 32 gigs and a good processor somewhere between 4 and 8 cores. And that's what I have for you today on 5 Minutes of Tech with Griffin.